welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about what I learned from Inktober this year um, and just looking at some of the art I did finish. I did finish all the days of Inktober, which was pretty cool. But also, I also just wanted to talk about what you can learn in a, in a big project like this, the types of takeaways you might have if you were to do this in the future. Um, all right, so let's get started. The first thing I wanted to talk about was how difficult it is to really make something look real and right in black and white, especially a piece that's like would normally be colorful. I have a hard time, and it's definitely something I want to work on, really um, adjusting for the black and whiteness. So this piece is of a little dinosaur sleeping. Um, but you can't tell if he's spotted or if he's color covered in mud, if this is a shadow or a pond. Um, these sort of look like bushes, but like you have a mid-ground but no background, and there's sort of some foreground here, but like it's not... I don't know. It's very difficult to really decipher what's going on with this, and I'm used to being able to rely on color for that. Um, but that just wasn't successful here. You know, it's a cute little dinosaur who's obviously asleep, but other than that, it's not not great. Didn't love this one. Next, I have a kind of stack of, of drawings that I don't feel like I really finished. Um, so the chicken head, obviously it's just a floating chicken head on a page. Uh, there's no shading in it. There's no, it's not a full chicken or rooster, you know, it's, admittedly this was really early on in Inktober and so still learning how to use the ink. Um, but even this texture is not, not very cool or anything, there's nothing unique about it. Um, these sea anemones, they, uh, they look th okay themselves. But there's, they're not casting any shadows, they're just floating. They don't, there's no horizon on this picture. Uh, it just doesn't feel complete to me. Um, we have this one, which was for whale, and it's a bunch of like, like Pluridon eating some fish. This feels closer to finished. Like the line weight variation, that's kind of cool. You can definitely, there's definitely a, a front, a middle, and a background. Um, but because I did no shading or coloring or anything, it just doesn't look done. Because it's because it's not. <laughs> um, and then this guy, um, guarded. Again, I did. I love the line work for this. It's really cute. Um, but it's just not finished. I boy, wouldn't have this have been fun with a pop of color. Um, I'm not sure how I would have even shaded it, but while we're looking at this one, this one also sort of suffers from something that a couple of my other pictures did, which is I can't seem to center my art on the page. Obviously in this example, it's in the top left. In this piece, I would have much preferred to have focused on the flowers. But I went and sketched straight on the piece of paper I was going to use, and at this point I was very limited in my paper because I uh, hadn't bought new paper yet. But, um, you know, ideally, how much better would this piece have been if only this bottom third were black and white and the rest were these beautiful pink flowers? I think it would have been a much cooler um, piece of, of art. But, you know, there you are. I don't even hate that one, but... Okay. Now I want to talk about some of the things I liked. So this piece is muddy. And, um... You would think that it has the same problems as the, that dinosaur piece did. But for some reason it doesn't. You understand immediately that this is a dog and it's rolling in a pile of mud. Um, I think part of it is I didn't try to get a bunch of variation in the tone. I used the same tone for the color as I did for the mud on his body. And 
I think that helped. Also, I was using the, the line work I did here. Maybe made it a little clear. It's not so thin. Um, I think this is a 0.03 fine liner. That other one might have been a little bit lighter. So I really like how this one turned out. It's also centered in the page, you know, little things. Um, and even though it doesn't have a background, it still feels finished. And I'm not exactly sure why that is yet. I really thought about that. Like what makes something feel finished versus not. This is another one that feels finished, even though there were still more that could have been done. There's no shadows around these shells. That could have been, you know, I could have put a shadow under this pearl here and I didn't do that. But I still like how this looks. Um, I like how this turned out. I, th I feel like I really was able to make a look of the texture of oyster shells. I think that's why I like this one so much. But again, you know, it's kind of on the border of not finished. Here's one that I really love. I just love how this guy turned out. I don't really have any negative comments about this, except that, uh, you know, it made a mess of my desk. I think I've got a permanent scratch stain on my desk that I can't figure out how to get out, but love how this one turned out. It is very hard to paint with that just straight black color though. So that's something to keep in mind. Like, I'm not sure if you can see, yeah, a little bit in the light here, um, how inconsistent that solid black looks. Um, and it's just because it's kind of thick and if you water it down at all, it's really obvious that it's watered down. So finding that happy medium is important when you use that solid black. And I used a lot in this Inktober. I love this one. Look at this. Look at those fish. Man, they turned out good. They look like real fish, don't they? Or at least I think they look like real fish. I don't know. You should look up a picture of these because they kind of look like real fish. Um... Their outlines are pretty dirty though, and I think I like that. It looks more natural that way, in a way, you know? Um, but I did have problems with smearing. This white, I used white um, ink on top of the black ink, and even though the black ink was dry, you know, I had it mixed on my palette, and I must, but I smeared it on this page. Not really sure. <laughs> There's not really much you can do about it at this point, but it's there. I actually had a lot of fun doing this one. This one was um, inspired by Minnie Small. She does these ink, kind of loose line sketches, um, and then paints them with watercolor. And that's, so that's what that's about. I didn't get overly precious with the colors in watercolor, and I al but I also didn't do any shading. So I'm kind of missing out on a lot of the scope for values in this picture, but at the same time it feels like a sketchbook or a sketch work, and I kind of like that feeling. It's funny because this one is just super simple, maybe a little stupid really, in concept, because I couldn't think of anything better for stretch. Uh, but it, I actually like how it turned out. There's something about the sort of contrasting lighter color underarm, and just the super simple and clean lines. Um, you definitely get what's going on. Do some rearranging here. So I'm not, I, you know, I'm not a portrait artist. I, I can't say that I admire how this side looks. It also falls on that problem where I did everything too low. I mean, I could have done this torso higher, could have had more mermaid tail on her. Oh well. But I do love how this side turned out. I don't know what the difference is between this and that and this one that makes this so much more obvious that these are bushes. I think it's because of the contrast. Part, part of it is I did some line work that looks more like leaves and I left it white. So it's like the tonal variation was super important, I think. Um, and this actually legitimately kind of looks like a waterfall. Like you look at this and you definitely know what you're looking at. You're looking at a stream with some lily pads and some fish in it. This is the one I did on day one. It's definitely the one I spent the most time on of all of them. And it does look pretty cool. I 
it looks like a lionfish. Great. Um, things I would do if I'd do this again, after all this detail work was in, I didn't then go over it with any more shading. I should have, but I was scared to screw it up. There sh there's this line on his face right here that I should have enhanced by darkening this fin behind it a little bit, just so that the face would pop forward more. Um, some things like that. But all in all, it's it's cool. I like how it turned out. Um, I think if I were to do it again, I wouldn't do it in ink because I had very little control as I was layering like the lines in his face with the depth of color in that. So these got really dark really fast and that's not really what I wanted. I wish it was more subtle, but you know, can't have everything. I think the reason I like this one so much is it's so simple and clean and it reads very well, or at least to me it seems like it reads very well. It's very obvious what's going on here. I like the starfish, I like the other starfish. Um, if I were to change anything about this piece, it would be um, to kind of give this coral piece a little more texture. Don't know how I would do that necessarily, but that would be what I would add. Um, while trying to keep everything else super simple, I don't, that's something I gotta think about is I like texture in artwork, but I don't necessarily know how to make the texture, so. This one was fun. This was a day I kind of felt like doing watercolor. Um, you know, it wasn't too beholden to, it didn't feel like I really needed to have to have an Inktober moment. Um, and so I did this, this was for day two, Tranquil. And I still like how this turned out. In fact, for some reason it looks better on camera than it does in person, but it, it's just so calm. And I've never successfully done a sunset like this before, but I, man, it really has that feeling with the purples and the clouds, and I just love how it turned out. And then, last but not least, we have roasted. I don't, I don't care too much about this shell, but I love how these chestnuts turned out. I think something I'm noticing is that the style of mine that I prefer is kind of these small, clean lines, just like we have in the starfish and the fish, that just accentuate details. But the defining factor is the darkness, you know, like the, the dark down here. Um, there's some shadow here. There's some shadow underneath each of these shells like where the shells leave out. And I really like how that looks. And I think all of my favorites kind of share that, that thin line texture. So that's just some things I've learned from Inktober this year. Um, thank you guys for listening. I hope that you guys learned some lessons this year from your Inktober and it wasn't just a slog. I hope you had fun. Um, let me know what you learned because I'm super interested in taking another look. I don't like doing something without looking back on it and seeing what I would change and what I would do again. So, oops, dropped a pen. So let me know if you have any insight, anything uh, else I should consider. Um, I'd be super interested in hearing from you. Feel free to like and subscribe down below.